This is Modern Homesteading. So today I'm back in the wood shop and uh, Jack's birthday is coming up uh, in about a week. And I wanted to do something very special for him and he's getting old enough now where this is it's time for him to have these two tools. This first one here, uh, actually both of these were given to me by my grandfather shortly before he passed away. But this is a small boy's hatchet, uh, really small that I just started to work on here a little bit. I'm going to take off this handle and completely restore this into perfect condition. It's really a nice old tool and it's really a great little shape and um, it's going to be perfect for him for a small boy's hatchet. It's got some rusting and pitting in there you can see so we're going to take all that down and leave it with a nice polished finish. This here is also uh, a really nice little find. This is on kind of a heavy hatchet handle but this is a proper boy's axe right here. A, a boy's axe uh, is traditionally considered to have about a 28 inch handle and about a two and a quarter inch, a two and a quarter pound head, uh, which is exactly what this is. This is this is actually a boy's axe head that's been put on um, a hatchet handle. This also belonging to my grandfather. So this will be uh, part two. This will be the the axe and this will be the hatchet. So this is what we'll be working on today. Yesterday, uh, the family went into town and we purchased uh, this beautiful piece of flat sawn eight quarter hickory. Nicest piece I've ever, I've ever had. Um, eight quarter means it's just about approximately two inches thick, but um, flat sawn, tight, tight growth rings, just beautiful, almost perfectly clear. And this was a beautiful piece of wood that is going to make a lot of nice handles. So that's what I'll be working with today. So let's start out the design. I have uh, in my mind the exact handle and how it was going to be. It's going to be something very unique I haven't done before. And I'll bring you along on restoring the head, um, hanging it, and getting everything ready. Uh, special gift ready for a very special boy. So the first thing we'll do is cut off Granddad's old handle here. So to get rid of this rusted pitted portion of the axe, I'm going to be using my bench belt sander here, using a 50 grit silica carbide uh, paper which is made for uh, metal or wood or anything. Be very careful here and I'll grind this down by hand, being sure that I don't overheat anything and working out all of that pitting. I started a little here on the other side, you can see it just touching it up a little bit and then we'll polish all this and have a beautiful, um, a beautiful accent. So I just finished up with the, the rough polish on this. I reprofiled it a little bit. It was a little bit fat right in here and I took quite a bit of material out of there. Very painstaking, slow process, but uh, turned out really nice. Softened these edges here and here just to give it a cleaner, smoother look. Hardened these edges on the back so it'll be good for pounding tent stakes. It'll bite a little bit better there on the pole but what a beautiful little axe head. I got all of the pitting out of it. One side was worse than the other. I do I do have uh, some swirl marks in here and I'll get those out that'll all be hand work once I get the handle on but you can see maybe just a slight few pitting there. I just didn't want to take any more out there but uh, that's very nice. What a beautiful little axe or hatchet. So now, time to put the uh, time to put the edge on it. So here's the the rough grind on the edge there. Because this was so small I couldn't use my normal method. I had to do it freehand it, but it turned out great. Still got the wire on it, but I'll take all that off. I'll finish all this off by hand. This is a rough 60 grit. I don't like to have it too sharp when I'm working on it, putting the handle on, because I 
tend to end up cutting myself, but good condition. So this is the final design here for Jack's hatchet that I've drawn out. I've given a lot of thought to this and I want it to be a hatchet that can be used really well with one hand, a big swell at the bottom, a nice organic curve in it, and in proportion to the head. And I think I like it. I think I'm going to go with it. So here's what I came up with with the design. You can see the side profile there. This here will mark the transition of where this will start to round this knob at the end and then here will transition in skinnier for the handle. Here swell out right where the head will come in and then skinnier for the top to fit to the eye of the hatchet head. So here's the roughed out handle. See I draw center lines on all four sides. Centers in between those two lines there. Visual cues so I know how to, so when I'm removing this material I can keep it symmetrical. I'll leave that line there and take away everything to those lines. And of course taper this way here and then right here we'll break over to the back side. So here's the finished product. Sorry I didn't bring you along for all the steps, but we've done that before many times. If you're interested in that, you can go back and watch videos of step by step on how to make axe handles. But one thing I did do different uh, on this one is um, I did the whole thing apart from the bandsaw of course uh, using this uh, this rasp. I got a whole box of these uh, from my granddad's stuff and it's got a fine and a coarse on it, a round and a flat and this was an awesome tool. Uh, you can do really nice handles with this. What's, the, what's nice about the round, as I'd never used before, is it really works good on all the contours. And this handle, uh, it may not look like much, but it's uh, there's a lot of work that went into this um, because of the shape. You can see, you know, I really like that shape of, of traditional bushcraft knives. That Nothing feels better in the hand than that. And I tried to mimic it with this hatchet. Um, this hatchet will be used two ways. It's small enough where you can choke up and do detail work. That's where you get that nice palm swell right there, you can see, which kind of really feels good in the hand. It feels just like my knife. I kind of copied that. And then also, if you need a little bit more chopping power, you can come back back here, and that just is like butter. That feels really nice with that big pommel on the bottom. I just hand carved all this with my bushcraft knife and cleaned it up a little bit with the rasp and kind of a faceted bottom which is kind of cool this is you know what my intention was this when I was making it was kind of for it to be this is a craftsman's axe this is not um, a show axe but one that's meant to be used and it kind of mimics that with uh, the rough the hard corners and I didn't finish sand this. All I did is I just finished it with this uh, this rasp. So, but still, it's got a nice grip to it. And boy, does it feel good in the hand. It's just uh, perfect. But boy, what a ton of work to get all of that. 
So I've got to put an edge on it. I'll do that tomorrow. It's just got kind of a rough edge on it. I've got some swirl marks in there that I'll have to buff out. I want that to be polished and nice. But turned out pretty good. I, I think Jack will really like it. Nice that he can have something that belonged to his grandfather. But his grandfather never thought that it would ever look like this when he bought it. So I, one question I wanted to ask you is if you got you guys that have had boys around the eight or nine years old, Jack's going to be nine here pretty soon, and I guess in a week. And if you've had uh, gifts that you've given or made that were really memorable, that really um, uh, were fantastic gifts, I would like to hear what they were. If you can give me some some ideas. Of course, I'm going to give him this, and but I thought maybe one more thing. Um, so if you have something that that was really meaningful for your, to your child, your child, your children that you gave as a gift, I'd like to know about it. So please leave that in the comments, and and we can share that with each other. Guthrie, Jim is Jim Guthrie, Vega of Oregon. Rush, <coughs> Rush Led Zeppelin wrote, uh, "I love the ear." Tom Bombadil, Bombadil. Bobadil comes to mind. Bomb